Thank you. It's such an honor to share for PJ and I the podium with Luna. And uh, I asked Luna where she lived. She said, I live in New Jersey. I lived in the same home for 50 years. I said, oh, that's great. How often, how many evenings did you cook? And Luna went, Pfft. I said, you'll get along with my wife, Joan. <laughs> you know, this is great for PJ and I because usually when we go to a basketball arena, we either ent leave with a loss or a technical foul. So this is a blessing for both of us. When Monsignor Sheeran called, he said, we're gonna bestow this honorary degree upon you. And I was flattered. And I said, uh, it's not based on my one loss record, I assume. And he said, no, I kept that away from the board. <laughs> I told him that PJ and you have a combined 600 wins. Let's keep it to ourselves that PJ has 500 of those. <laughs> you know, many years ago when PJ was raising the program to the 1950 levels, and Joe mentioned his accomplishments, we were in a little restaurant in New York, which PJ enjoyed as well, called Nicola's, and we had some friends, and at the other table was Governor Wilkinson from, New from Kentucky, and they were after PJ to leave Seton Hall and go to the University of Kentucky. And I said to the waiter, who was Italian, would you kindly bring over this beautiful bottle of wine to the governor of Kentucky and tell him we are thankful that he didn't take PJ from Seton Hall, which the waiter did. And shortly later, the governor, Governor Wilkinson, his chief of staff, his wife, and a state policeman came over. And New York was in the throes of some very tough economic times, similar to now. And uh, the governor came over and he said, I'd like to thank you for the bottle of wine, but uh, we didn't understand the waiter. The waiter said that this bottle of wine is from City Hall. <laughs> and I wanted to find out how you could afford it working at City Hall. So that was my contribution to Seton Hall. I talked the governor out of taking PJ. You know, at these times, a couple of words jump out. Vision is one and passion is another. And much like you, a few years ago, all of us sat in the audience. And I remember I had a vision of being a professional basketball player. And we played the University of Cincinnati one evening in the garden. And I, unfortunately, was not doing too well. And the ball was thrown out to me. I dribbled down the other end of the floor and put up the most unattractive layup you've ever seen. It hit everything, and it went in. And the ball went down the other end, and it went out of bounds, and it rolled over to a youngster in a wheelchair. In those days, they lined the garden. And uh, the young boy picked up the ball, and he said, you know, mister, you're the worst basketball player I've ever seen. <laughs> now, I stopped short of kicking the wheelchair, <laughs> but I realized I should find another career. And that's when the passion for coaching came in. And having coached for 16 years, 11 of them at Seton Hall, in 1978, ESPN came and asked, in the fall of that year, they had a meeting. And they would like to have a coach that was active become a studio analyst in March, which I ended up doing for two years prior to leaving Seton Hall. But the one thing that they said is we want to have a coach who we, we know will not make the NCAA come March. And that's how I ended up in television, folks. So blame them. But this is your day. It's a day to enjoy your accomplishments, celebrate your achievements. There's a race going on out there called life. And at some point, the baton is going to be passed, and that's going to be the career that you're going to follow. When you do grab hold of it, embrace it, cherish it, and give it the best you can do. Thank you very much.